Henry Pelham was born on the 25th of September 1694 in Sussex and was the younger brother of Thomas Pelham. Educated first at Westminster School and then King's College, he then was educated further at Hart Hall around 1710. Pelham was also a volunteer for the army and served in a regiment at the Battle of Preston in 1715, a conflict between the British forces and the Jacobites. He returned as Member of Parliament for Seaford by his brother at a by-election in February of 1717. He represented Seaford until 1722. In 1721, thanks to strong family influence and also the recommendation of Robert Walpole, Pelham was chosen to be the Lord of the Treasury. At the 1722 general election, he returned as MP for the Sussex County, and in 1724 he entered the Ministry as Secretary at War, but this office was exchanged in 1730 for Paymaster of the Forces. In 1726, Pelham married Lady Catherine Manners, with whom he had four daughters. Pelham became a more prominent MP through his support of Walpole on the question of the excise, an attempt to basically raise taxes on merchants and consumers rather than the upper class. Pelham, Walpole and Pelham's brother, the Duke of Newcastle, Thomas Pelham Holes, would often meet at Horton Hall where they would come up with a lot of the country's policy. These meetings became known as the Norfolk Congress. Alongside Walpole, Pelham served as a founding governor of the popular charity The Foundling Hospital in 1739. Similar to his brother, Pelham was an active Freemason of the Premier Grand Lodge of England. In 1742, Pelham became the most prominent member of the cabinet and therefore prime minister. This was after a union of parties and resulted in the formation of an administration, seeing Pelham succeed Spencer Compton after his death. His first year of Premiership is regarded as a continuation of the Carteret Ministry, with Lord Carteret continuing as Secretary of State for the Northern Department, bearing the responsibility of foreign affairs. This is of course after Carteret helped Compton basically run the government while he was in power. Carteret was close to King George II, which aided him and the government greatly. Within this ministry, Pelham served as First Lord of the Treasury, Chancellor of the Exchequer and Leader of the House of Commons. In November of 1744, Pelham and his brother forced Carteret out of the ministry, Henry telling the king that either Carteret stepped down or he and his brother would, leaving George without a government. From then on, the Pelhams shared power, but Henry was regarded as the leading figure, yet rank and influence made his brother very powerful within the cabinet. In spite of genuine attachment and respect, there were occasionally disputes between the two, which sometimes led to further difficulties. This was the beginning of the Broad Bottom Ministry. Pelham was strongly in favour of peace, but did carry on the War of the Austrian Succession, however with indifferent success. The country, however, wearied of the interminable struggle, was disposed to acquiesce in his foreign policy almost without any complaint. Pelham also had to deal with the Jacobite Uprising of 1745 on top of this. However, in 1746, King George II, thwarted in his own favourite schemes, wanted to make a change to the government. The Pelhams resigned because of this, and William Pulteney was installed as Prime Minister, with the return of Carteret in his government. This plan failed, however, as they were unable to find support within the cabinet, and therefore couldn't form a ministry. Pulteney abandoned the attempt and the King had to concede to the brothers. After two days, the Pelhams resumed office at the King's request, forced to accept their terms for resuming office. One of these terms was to insist that the King should have total confidence in a ministry rather than a partial grudging acceptance of the Whigs. The second broad bottom ministry began, and this time it was stronger than before. This era was essential to the development of prime ministerial power as being entirely dependent on a commons majority rather than royal prerogative interventions. Around this time, the king struggled with his son, Frederick, Prince of Wales, and in 1748, Frederick, a Tory, planned to bring down the Pelhamites at a general election the following year. Pelham called an early poll in 1748 by asking the king to dissolve Parliament in 1747. Frederick and George grew to hate each other with an unspeakable animosity. One consequence of this was a closer relationship between Pelham and the king. Towards the tail end of 1748, the Treaty of Aix-la-Chapelle was signed, leading to both a number of cost-cutting budgetary measures, but also the end of the War of Austrian Succession. Under Pelham, the army and navy spending shrunk from £12 million to £7 million per annum. Pelham also promised to reduce interest rates through the introduction of a Balancing Act measure from 4% to 3% by 1757. He also assisted a fund to reduce the national debt, which he refinanced, dropping the interest rate from 4% to 3%. 
In 1749, the Consolidation Act was passed, reorganising the Royal Navy. On the 20th of March 1751, the British calendar was reorganised as well, with New Year's Day officially becoming the 1st of January. Britain would adopt the Gregorian calendar one year later. In 1752, Pelham was able to reduce the land tax from 4 shillings to 2 shillings in the pound, which was an effective reduction from 20% to 10%. Around this time also there were things happening, specifically with press gangs which were men taken with or without notice into military or naval force by compulsion to sea in an expansive navy fleet. One social consequence of this was to the growth of industrial processes necessary for warfare. In the ports the distillation of gin presented the depravity issuing forth from the demonic drink as it was dubbed, or demon drink. Many people persuaded the administration to introduce the Gin Acts, however the 1751 Act was the last of four that had largely failed to prevent serious social unrest, including riots in London, reduced the number of licensed dealers and sellers of liquor. This restriction of supply resulted in consumption dropping and prices falling, helping to manage the issue. Two of Pelham's final acts were the Jew Bill of 1753 which allowed Jews to become naturalised by application to Parliament. This act was later repealed the following year due to an outburst of anti-Semitism. The second final act was the Marriage Act of 1753 which enumerated the minimum age of consent for marriage. Pelham's tenure as Prime Minister was one of success due to his strong personality, moderate amount of self-respect and also, even though there were issues within the cabinet, they never broke out into open revolt against him. Pelham's foreign policy followed Walpole's model of emphasising peace and ending wars. His financial policy was a major success, once peace had been signed in 1748. Pelham has been described as a shrewd and calculated politician, reserved and cautious, but also bearing integrity, much needed in a venal age. Early in 1754, Henry Pelham died at the age of 59, and was succeeded by his brother.